Hello everyone. Well, I welcome you all uh, once again for this wonderful session on machine learning. Um, I tried to make you explain what is dimensional data reduction, however I couldn't, but you already know that what is the intuition behind dimensional data reduction in unsupervised learning. Well, in a short overview, what do you mean by DR is DR will give you DR means uh, dimensionality reduction. Well, this reduction in dimension basi basically gives you an intuition that uh, while working with higher dimension, while working with higher dimensions, our system is going to be more complex. You understand this? Your system is going to be more complex, and the idea to resolve this we can have to have a lower dimension. Okay, we need to convert our data set in a way that it becomes a lower dimension and then we can work it out okay so this is the main intuition behind dimensionality reduction we'll discuss about dimension dimensionality reduction in our in our later sessions but however this session basically prescribed to uh, principal component analysis which is uh, 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 you can say the subtopic of dr okay so let's get started with principal component analysis which we tried uh, early morning to discuss However, I with, a, with some technical issues I couldn't. But this session I'm gonna make you explain what is PCA. Okay, so the principal component analysis, shortly abbreviated as PCA. Okay, well this PCA the the main idea or the main motivation behind PCA is also the uh, reduction redu reduction in dimension uh, what we had discussed in uh, dr okay so the thing is if i have a data set let's say you already know that to work around with data set and uh, with generally with machine learning you definitely need a larger amount of data set so let's say i have a data set of around uh, let me have let's say this is a 2 tb of data that means they have definitely larger number of rows and larger number of columns, right? So it is, let's say this data is n cross n dimension data, okay? So the, so the all features, so that my x, uh, let me just remove this, my x belongs to the n dimensional vector space, okay? So your data set is in a, in a, in a larger feature space. So I cannot work around with, the, with, this, with this data set. Why? Because if you are having this this much of data set this this huge amount of data data set then basically to represent this uh, this 2 db of data i need n dimension space okay i need to represent my data set in a n dimension space well i don't think i can work around with n dimension space because th this will make this will become my system more complex and more uh, tidy to to understand you okay so what i can do is I need to reduce this two dimension. I, I need to reduce this n dimension space to some some k dimension. Okay. I need to reduce this n dimension to k dimensions. So in general, let's say this is a three dimension space. So I need to reduce it to two dimension. This is my intuition. And why I'm basically doing this is because if I have this this huge data set, this will create a problem create a problem such as it will it will give me more number of relationship you understand this because I have a large data set a huge number of data like uh, n rows n rows and n, n columns because of that reason I will get more number of relationship here and when you get more number of relationship that means uh, more number of variables okay so more number of relation that that means you are having more number of variables and when you are working with more number of variables that means your model is going to be let me just change my color to some other so that I can show you that so if you are working with more number of relationship that means you are likely to proning your system with an overfit model okay you will likely to get your overfit model here why because you already know that an overfit model has a property called high variance that means if i have a data set looks like this that then an overfit model will try to 
try to collect all these data points and it will it will create a graph looks like this okay this is an overfit model and and the the problem is here is the high variance okay this is the reason i will get this kind of graph okay and this is basically not a good idea to have an overfit model this is this is wrongly uh, you know interpreted over here so this a huge number of uh, rows and columns will create a problem called as more number of relationship between variables and when you having uh, so many variables like in in this model you can see there are so many variables x x x x then you need to cover all these data points and need to create a graph looks like this and this is an overfit model and i don't need this overfit model this is this is not a good idea to have an overfit model here i really don't need in my machine learning that i, I get this overfit model i need to reduce this overfit model to a good model and how i can do that is to with the help of two mechanisms i can do this one mechanism is feature elimination this is one way you can you know reduce uh, or you can work around with the uh, overfit model one is feature elimination or another one is feature extraction okay both these things can be deal can deal with an overfit model are you getting it i hope you are getting it okay i don't need this overfit model to deal with this overfit model i need to i need to reduce my dimension from n dimension to k dimension and how can i do that with the help of these two mechanism feature elimination and feature extraction now the thing is i need to understand what basically these two methods are doing here well a feature extraction if i if i make you explain what is feature extractions let's say i have 10 uh, independent variable okay so i have a 10 independent variable and when i say independent variable by means of independent variable it is nothing but your y component so if i have a equation y equals to mx plus c then my y is uh, i'm so sorry this independent variable is x i'm so sorry for this why uh, wherein this equation y is going to be your dependent variable so this is going to be your dependent variable and here in the case of this x is going to be your independent variable and why is that so is because whatever the value you are giving over here your y is going to change right so that's why the this y is completely depend on this x component however the x component is not depending to anyone so this 10 independent variable here is going to you know is it's going to it's going to give you this 10 new independent variable is going to give you 10 new independent variable okay so this 10 new independent you will get is the combination of new and old so this is a combination is going to be a combination there's a combination of the old variable and let me just draw a line and a new variable so okay so this is basically uh, well you, you will get a you you have 10 independent variable and you will get 10 new independent variable with the help of these 10 units so if i have let's say uh, by means of uh, feature extraction what i'm saying is so uh, let me just let me just draw over here so if i have x1 x2 and x3 as a value like uh, let me uh, draw it out like 0 0.58 and let me have 1.8 and let me have 2. Point, uh, uh, let's say oh i'm so sorry let me have um, just uh, um, 1.5 okay so what i'm gonna do is i have x1 x2 x3 and then i can have so this 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 is my this is my independent variable okay so this is my just independent variable and i with the help of let me just separate it out so with the help of this independent variable i will get new independent variable over here so 0.5 uh, could be like uh, let me just, just say 0.6 could be like this is 2 and uh, it could be like uh, like this is 1.5 itself so i will get new variables such as z1 z2 and z3 it is in the data set itself okay no worry you don't need to create these numbers but you are 
so in the data set just like for an example your 0.58 is here your 1.8 is here and 1.5 is here so in a very near the so this is my one data point this is two data point this is third data point but in the let me just change the color so that you can so that you can understand and these the new data points so so if this is my x1 x2 and this is x3 and then i can say that very near to this 1.5 i have this z3 here okay and very near to this this is z2 and very near to this i have z1 so you are taking those near data points which are uh, you know likely to be uh, x1 x2 and x3 so uh, so y y with the help of this 10 new independent variable you are getting 10 new independent variable and it is a, a combination of old and new okay so this is the feature extraction i hope you are getting it in the data set so uh, this is this is feature extraction and when i say feature elimination feature elimination is easy to understand it is nothing but you are dropping some variables so in feature i'm just writing the abbreviated form feature elimination so el it says dropping some dropping some variable from data set okay Feature, uh, dropping some variable from data set uh, by means of dropping you can drop some variable who is having high coefficient value so you are dropping those those variables so who is having high coefficient value okay so you are dropping these high coefficient values such as if i if my x1 is having a range of 1000 i am going to drop it if my x2 is having a range of 2000 i am going to drop it however my x3 x4 x5 they all are in the same range let's say it is in the 10 this is 15 this is 16 i'm going to be okay with this i'm not going to drop it however these high range are going to be dropped out so okay so this is feature elimination i hope you're getting it why i mean in feature elimination we are definitely losing some information from the data set but uh, it is necessary part okay uh, otherwise you are not reducing your dimension from n dimension to k, k dimension okay so uh, this is the this is the problem formulation you can say of the pca where we are reducing our n dimension space to k dimension space and how can you do that with the help of feature elimination or feature extraction now when you are dealing with pca pca is basically come and exist it come and exist in feature elimination so your principal component analysis your principal component let me just write it PCA. It is a feature elimination. It is sorry, it is a feature extraction mechanism. Okay. Please remember this that your PCA come and exist in feature extraction, where with the help of 10 independent variables, you are creating 10 new independent variables. Okay, I hope you are getting it. So uh, so, so let's say I have a graph in PCA. So let's say this is the graph. What I'm going to do is I have a graph and I definitely need some other color to represent my data points here. So let me just take pink color over here. So let's say I have uh, a point here, a point here, point here, and let's say I have a point here and a point here. Okay. So what this PCA is going to do is it, it will it will create a feature space here. Uh, it will draw a line um, let me just change the color i need to change the color to show you the visualization of the uh, this thing. okay so let's say this is the i can't draw it okay so this is the line uh, this is the line of feature space so what this pc is going to do that i am right right now i am in the two dimension space so this is my x2 and this is my x1 I, I will what I gonna do is I will change from 2d to 1d I, okay so to do that I need to project these data point these x data point into the uh, to, to this line okay this perpendicular line I need to project it and how can I do that is with the help of projection technology or projection mechanisms so I perpendicularly draw a line and I will project my data point okay again I I draw a line and I project it here again draw a line and I'll project it 
to our line and I project it and this is already in okay so this is the this this is the projection that we did right now by means of projection I hope you understand now the projection meaning like uh, if I have a data set looks like this I'm just giving an idea from the data set that what exactly happening in the data set so if I have x1 x2 x3 and so on uh, let me have also x4 x5 and so on so basically what is happening over here in the with the help of this projection so if I have x1 uh, as a value called 0.5 and then let's say 0.6 this is like uh, 1.8 1.7 uh, let me have this is 2.3 at 2.9 this is this is 1.9 this is uh, 1.8 and so on so okay so what I'm gonna do over here by means of projection so if I have a value as 1.8 in the in the x2 so when I represent in the graph okay when I represent this x2 x1 x, x, x3 x4 x5 what is happening is is this is 1.8 let's say then my 1.9 is going to come over here and 1.8 is going to come over here so by means so let's say this is the 1.8 of x2 then this is the 1.8 of x4 so these two points are very near to each other so x2 is already here so let's say this is the x2 so this projected value is nothing but x4 okay so I'm projecting another value from the data set uh, and, and, and that is going to be our my this, and that is going to be my new independent variable okay and that is nothing but the projection okay so here uh, x when I say x is nothing but your actual data and when I say uh, this round shaped x it is nothing but projection okay projection of actual data I hope now you are getting the uh, the PCA formulation so uh, we, we are projecting our actual data to some nearby uh, you know uh, nearby data point and uh, we are reducing the uh, this two dimension into one dimension and how we are reducing I, I, I'm gonna show you and you can easily see that uh, initially I was working with two dimension x2 and x1 now I have a line here and on this line I have all the projected values so if I have this x1 here x2 here and this x3 here x4 here and x5 here now you can see I have all the point here in the one line only so this is my x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 I, I, I already converted it can you see this this is x4 and x5 okay so from the 2d I'm converting uh, converting or projecting this uh, from two dimension to one dimension here okay this is what I did in the PCA so PCA is going to I'm going to write it over a statement PCA is going to find a lower dimension lower dimension space such as 1D okay and uh, wish to project the data that means finding new variable by means of projecting that means it is finding new variable from the data set so that it is also very important so that the sum of so that sum of squares sum of squares this is square all right let me write it down sum of squares of these distance sum of square of these distance get minimized okay distance gets minimized this is also very important this last last line okay so I'm reducing definitely I'm reducing from two dimension to one dimension but also take care that you are you are working with some of squares of these distance get minimized I also need this okay so if I am projecting something from here to here then I need that this distance sum of squares of these th this two data points is going to be minimized okay 
I need that data point which can minimize the distance between these two data points. Okay, my actual data point and the projected data point has to be you know minimized. The distance is going, is going to be minimized. Okay, so this is PCA, and one more important thing over here that uh, while working with this projection, please keep that in mind that I, I had shown you that this is the um, this is the line where I am projecting. So these are the point and this is the line. This is projected and my x value is here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I should not this. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't do that circle because circle represent the projection. Okay, so this is the best projection. This is the this is the best projection line. This is the best projection. Um, however, there is one more line that you can draw over here, but then it will, you know, it is not going to be the the best projection. Uh, so how can you project on this line? Well, you need a perpendicular line, and you will project here. Okay, you need a, a perpendicular line, and you will project here. You need another perpendicular line, and you will project here. Now you can see the distance between the actual uh, sorry, the actual data point and the projected data point is very high. Okay, these distances are very very large. So this is basically the worst projections. Don't use it. You need to find a you need to find a, a vector space uh, of this projection feature of this projection that what is going to be the best and what is going to be the worst projection. If you are taking this worst projection, then the sum of squares of this distance is not going to be minimized. They are going to be very high, and your PCA is not going to work. Your PCA will give you a higher dimension always. Okay, it is not going to be lower down. Okay, so keep that in mind that you need to be you, when, whenever you are projecting, you ne you need those independent variable, new independent variable, which are very near to each other. Okay, so this is what we want in the PCA. Uh, now I'll I'll give you the uh, the PCA algorithm that what exactly happening in the PCA. Uh, uh, I had taken these notes from the N2 NG codes. Um, I'm really thankful for that. If you don't understand my lecture, you can go and refer also those videos. They are pretty good in content. However, I had taken the source and the algorithm from uh, that video. Okay, so I'm thankful for the N2 NG codes. Okay, so now PCA algorithm. Uh, what what happen what what will happen in PCA is so in the PC algorithm, let's say I have a training set. Uh, my training set in the for the unsupervised data set, it looks like x1, x2. Okay, these are the indexes, and let's say this is the xm. Okay, so this is my training data set, um, and keep that in mind that this is a very important point here. Before applying PC algorithm, you need to apply something called as feature scaling. And we had precisely seen uh, this mechanism in our third or fourth chapter, where feature scaling says that you don't you don't directly use the data point, uh, but you, you use something called as scaling, okay, before using that data point. So what uh, is the feature scaling? So by means of feature scaling, what you can do is if you are having x uh, of i, then you can create a scaling factor such as this x minus u of j. And if is if this is the jth, uh, you know, a jth uh, feature, then I can use something like this. Okay, so this is the scaled feature now. Okay, this is the scaled feature. So by means of scaling, it means nothing but if it is in the range of 100, then this scaling is will give you in the in the in the value of 0.5 to point uh, of one. Okay, so the value is going to be like in between uh, 0 to 1. Okay, any value. So you are scaling your feature from xj to xj minus uj. This is the very important feature. And more precisely, you can uh, you can put your uh, a scaling factor as u of j belongs to you can take any scaling factor such as mean mean max normalization or the range factor or likewise okay so this is averaging you are doing averaging from j to 1 to m or actually this is i and you are scaling all those 
vectors okay so you are scaling all your feature which is there inside this training set and you are converting that into the new j xj minus uj okay so this is the first step uh, before uh, starting with the pca algorithm right now in the pca what uh, so after these two steps you will apply your uh, apply your pca intuition so what you will write here so you will write reduce after that two point you will write this is the third point reduce a data from n dimension you can see clearly you can see here we are reducing the n dimension to k dimension this is a pretty much important point here this is the problem formulation of or you can say the integration behind the pca so you are reducing the data from n dimension to k dimensions so for that what you can do here you need to compute something called as co covariance matrix okay so you will compute you will compute covariance matrix okay and i will not uh, give you the mathematics behind this covariance matrix you can find any resource over the internet to see the maths behind this covariance matrix okay and we can represent this covariance matrix with the help of this sigma sign and i will not and i will not draw this sigma sign like this because it is also the sign for summation so i will simply write sigma okay i will write sigma here so the sigma it looks like or your covariance matrix is going to be like this 1 by m summation of i equals to 1 to n and your xi and your xi is going to be here transposed okay this is going to be like this okay so you can see your sigma uh, your covariance matrix looks like this okay your all training set is is multiplied or uh, it is going to be multiplied with the transpose of that uh, you know uh, the training set itself okay all the all the variables you are multi one is the xi is going to be multiplied with xi of transpose itself okay so you are multiplying two matrices uh, with one of the same but uh, the other matrices is going to be in the transposed version okay so uh, you are uh, uh, going to use this sigma and uh, to find this sigma what you can do is if you want to find the sigma then you need to find something called as uh, eigenvectors okay so compute eigenvectors don't go for the mathematics behind this all these things but these are the steps for the algorithm just um, uh, keep a like on that and you will get the idea so compute eigenvectors of the matrix uh, I mean to say the sigma okay covariance matrix okay so compute the eigenvector for, for that so what you are doing here uh, to find the the eigenvector of this this covariance matrix uh, you can use uh, one thing you can use is you can use something called as eig function okay eig of sigma will give you the eigenvector for for this sigma or either you can use svd the svd is sing i mean I, I need to write it over here this is svd of sigma which also both will give you the eigenvectors for sigma okay eigenvector for sigma both will give you svd here it is nothing but singular singular value decomposition okay singular value decomposition so both these function eig and svd will give you the eigenvectors so i can represent or i can i can I can I can put it over here in this way uh, let me just take the other color so I will write here you will what you will get from the I will I, uh, I'll take the eigenvectors from the SVD function and the SVD function will give me give me three factors over here and these three factors are nothing but mat, but but matrices here three matrices these two matrices are the orthogonal mat, matrix these are orthogonal matrix and this v here oh i'm so sorry this u and v okay this u and v are the orthogonal matrix however this s is going to be the diagonal matrix okay this is diagonal matrix 
So your SVD function, uh, which gives you the eigenvector in the form of three matrices, which is U, S, and V, where U and V are orthogonal matrix, whereas the S is the diagonal matrix. Okay. So we are pretty much focusing on this U matrix. Okay. So I'm interested in this this U factor or the U matrix. Okay. I'm pretty much interested in U. So we will write it over here. We need U matrix more precisely, more precisely over here. Okay, and your U matrix is, I will write it over. Your U matrix is n cross n matrix. Remember, I need to convert this n dimension into k dimension space. This is the problem formulation of PCA. So my mu matrix is n cross n matrix. Okay, so it represent it. It it looks like this. So mu one and then mu2 and so on to mu k okay this is how this is how your n cross n matrix going to be look like okay so this is so your mu belongs to r n dimension space it represent in the n cross n matrix that means it is in the n dimension space okay so um, uh, what I'm going to do is, I, if I want to do the PCA, then I want to reduce the, what we, what we want here is, uh, this is n cross n matrix, and again, we want here, we want to reduce a dimension We want to reduce dimension from n to k so how can i do that i this is n cross n i will take k dimension from this n okay so i will i need this k dimension from this n dimensions okay so what i'm gonna do is i will take the first k column from this n dimension so i'll i'll, I'll grab this box and this box represent my first k column okay first k column okay i will take the um, oh, I'm so sorry. This is not K. This is M actually. Okay, this is M. So uh, my training set. If you remember, my training set X1 is going to be XM. This is my training set. So that's why I have the uh, the eigenvectors as U mu1, mu2, 2 till mu M. And I'm taking the first K column because I need to reduce this uh, this this complete uh, data set from from this. Um, from n dimension to k dimension so that's why i'm taking the first k columns from the n cross n dimension okay so what i'm gonna do here is i will i will take this is my mu initially it looks like this mu 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 one this is mu two and till mu m so i'm taking i'm taking only k columns from here taking k columns and by the way this is n cross n so now your my so I, i'm representing this mu now in terms of z and your z is going to be mu 1 mu 2 till mu k okay this is this is my mu reduce okay so this is my mu and now this is mu reduce and i am representing this uh, mu reduce with this uh, with this letter z okay and your z belongs to z belongs to r n cross k dimension so this is n cross k matrix okay remember that this is my n cross k matrix which was which was earlier n cross n matrix now it is n cross k matrix okay next thing is what i'm going to do is next thing is i'm going to transpose this so my complete mu reduce which looks like earlier it looks like this okay it, this it looks like this I'm so sorry i'm slow slow on this and this is n cross k uh, earlier now i I'm, I'm going to reduce it i'm going to transpose it sorry so mu reduce is going to be now transpose it and it is going to be multiplied with x okay uh, this is my fe x feature space this is my training set and this is n cross one dimension so this is my 
uh, so it is earlier n cross k now it is going to be now it is going to be k cross n matrix okay earlier it was n cross k my mu reduced now i transpose it because of this transposition i have k cross n matrix now and this is already the feature space n cross n so it it it, it looks like this let me just uh, normalize this and some other color so it looks like this so mu1 mu2 and so on mu k okay and i already have the x so this is going to be k cross n which is going to be multiplied with n cross 1 and this complete thing when it, it is going to be uh, multiplied you will get k cross 1 so if you remember earlier so you, you you can see here this is this is this is k cross 1 earlier my mu my mu was n cross n now my mu is basically k cross 1 so I'm, 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 I'm you can see here I'm reducing my n dimension into the k dimension space okay this is done with the help of PCA and this is what we see in this complete topic we are taking uh, or we are reducing the n dimension space into uh, uh, from n dimension space to the k dimension space this is what exactly we want in the PCA the dimensionality reduction algorithm okay so this is what we see the intuition behind the PCA is to reduce it and we precisely had had done this so I can say that uh, my x that was belongs to R n now it belongs to z I'm representing this I'm projecting this okay I'm nothing I'm doing nothing but I'm projecting this x into z and now it belongs to R of k and this is this this precisely the thing that we seen in PCA. Okay. So, I hope you are getting it. This is principal component analysis and if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the uh, comment section um, uh, whenever you are, uh, I mean, I mean, um, available. Okay. Um, I will shortly write the algorithm in a in few steps and uh, I already told you that I had taken this uh, complete algorithm from the Andrew NG course. So, I am thankful to that. So, the C2 code for this. So the pseudo code for PCA algorithm, it looks like this. So your sigma, sigma is important here. Sigma is the only thing that we are, you know, the, the covariance matrix that we are dealing with. So, okay, so this is the pseudo code and you can see uh, the sigma function and uh, which this is the uh, X, I mean the training set and it is multiplied with the training set transpose of that okay and uh, we can get this sigma with the help of this SVD function which is singular uh, value decomposition and uh, the output of this SVD sigma you will get three matrices u s and v which are nothing but eigenvectors so uh, we are very important uh, uh, this u u matrix which is very important and uh, uh, we are interested in this u uh, vector which is n cross n matrix and we want to reduce this n cross n into so i want to reduce this n cross n into uh, k cross 1 this is my this is my thing okay so the you you reduce you will get uh, the k column you will grab the k column from this from this matrix n cross n you will get the first k column from n, n cross n matrix and you will get u reduce which can be represented with the help of z and your z uh, so z is this and this particular thing is nothing but mu reduce uh, this is mu reduce transpose and you are multiplied it with the feature space okay feature space x so this is in the two dimension okay you already had seen this is in the two dimension this x uh, however this this z this u mu reduce is basically in the one dimension okay so this is uh, n cross n again and this is uh, where it is this is k cross 1 okay i hope you understand this pseudo code and uh, you understand the pca if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much for listening to me